Hey guys, it's Alex. So, I think today is uh, July 23rd, 2018. So, about a month ago, I put out a video talking about potential vehicles that I'm gonna purchase or I might purchase to replace the Genesis. Subsequently, that kind of went away because I didn't wanna basically pony up 20 something thousand dollars cash for a Boss 302. I didn't wanna pony up that same amount of money for a 2011 to 2012 GT500. I didn't think it was worth it to come out of pocket that much if it made financial financial sense. As much as as much financial sense as it can make. I am going to take a hit on the Genesis because I've only owned it a year and I have put close to 50,000 miles in that year driving back and forth from West Palm Beach to New Smyrna Beach. But the 2018 Mustang also didn't really make sense because the initial starting price was a little higher than I was willing to come off of. I, you know, after after it was all said and done, the what I would be financing was insanely above what list was. So I forgot about it. I was like, see you later. Forgot about it. Started to get reacclimated with the Genesis. Bought new tires. Did everything to have it live a healthy, long life. Then I get a call. All of a sudden, 2019 Mustangs are ending up at Ford lots. And there are a lot of leftover, quote unquote. I mean, it's July, and it's crazy how fast Ford wants to pump out the new Mustangs out there. I I think there's going to be so many S550s out there. It's going to be disgusting just how many S550s there'll be out there, 15 to uh, 19. So the 19, 2019 Mustangs are out there on the lots already with the new colors and this and that. And I get a call and a sales manager, guy I know, you know, it's good to know people in high places, I guess. Um, guy I know or I know of loosely said, hey, I can get you a smoking. I'm saying smoking like I can't even mention it type deal on a 2018 Mustang. And I was like, dude, I can't, I, I don't want to swing it. It doesn't make sense. I've already bought new tires for the Genesis. I've done this, I've done that. I'm good. Then he shows me how much I can get into a 2018 Mustang for. And my brain, oh, you know, oh, I've already done a lot of work to the Fairmont. I put a lot of money into that. I bought another vehicle um, that I'll announce later, but that's like a long-term project. I just wanted to have it so it didn't end up at the junkyard. And now this guy tells me I have the exact car you're looking for. <sighs> so I'm gonna go up there, take a look at it, unfortunately. <laughs> See if I can spend some more money, but the deal makes sense. I'm gonna get very good value for the trade-in on this. And if I like the car and I like how all the numbers shake out, we'll see, I might come home in a brand new, to me, 2018 Mustang. We'll see, heading up there now. There's a Genesis. So, I'll be trading in the Genesis. They were nice enough to give me a good deal and I'll be getting a 2018 manual Mustang Oxford white with the performance package as you see here with spoiler delete so this is now my daily the guys were here nice enough to take care of me gave me a great deal on it gentleman right in there in the back was integral and part of the process so everything is uh, good to go so there you go um, it was one of those things where it's good to know people in right places um the guy called me up and said look we got one in stock we're, re we're ready to deal with you and i'm like all right sounds good give me a killer traded on the car i'm like insane i was like all right that'll work man so uh yep pretty much that's gonna be the new hotness and i'll uh, take some video going down the road get your thoughts and impressions on the way back it's about an hour and a half drive back so once i get uh situated and everything signed up inside i'll get in my new car a new daily 2018 performance package manual Mustang just like that guys I own a 2018 Mustang driving in it right now about to head back to West Palm Beach so I'm gonna have to continue this video tomorrow get you proper lighting but um it's pretty much straightforward it's got the track package gauges um, they filled it up with 93 I told them I need 93 in it and they said absolutely 93 who the hell's driving their stupid engine oh some fucking uh, Harley so I'm gonna continue this video tomorrow once we get some good lighting talk to you about the car what the first mod will be and trust me it has nothing to do with tuning
Hey guys, it's Alex, and yes, I took the plunge and bought a 2018 Mustang. Now, I am gonna mod it right away because every manual Mustang needs this mod done to it ASAP. And I have my little shitty ass garage here. And I'm gonna show you guys, if you have an MT82 equipped 15 and up Mustang, hell, even an 11 to 14 Mustang, this is a must do immediately. You must do this immediately and it costs nothing and it does a ton for how the car drives. So let's get to it. So I bought myself an MT82 equipped performance package Mustang. <clears throat> and a lot of you know, uh, if you've driven these cars in stock form, the clutch feels weird, okay? So what I'm gonna do is what every Mustang owner should do that has a uh, MT82 equipped Mustang and is take the helper spring out way up there. If you push on the helper spring, actually if you push on the clutch, there's a helper spring up there. Let me get the uh, light up there. Hopefully that'll help. There we go, we got a light. We have light now. Yeah, like my rusty tools? They're hand-me-downs. I'm cheap. So this guy right here, that helper spring needs to come off. Why? It is a tremendous, useless pain in the ass that serves no real purpose in my opinion. So in order for you to get that sucker out of there, you have to pretty much collapse that spring and slide it out because Honestly, it does nothing in my opinion for throttle feel if you really don't know when the clutch comes out because it springs back so quickly and it makes it difficult for you to slip the clutch on these cars and if you follow any of my videos, I am a big fan of pedal feel and right around here, it's really notchy and it springs right back up and it makes it really difficult to slip the clutch properly because the spring is forcing the pedal up and actually quote unquote making it easier to push down but in my opinion it does the absolute opposite and here's the mechanism so what I did was I basically went up in there I collapsed it and I twisted twisted left and right and it's literally held down there by force it's not held down there by any kind of bolt or anything it's literally held down by force and a notch on the you know on the pedal assembly take a look now See that little so now you don't have that weird springiness that would happen somewhere in the middle and the clutch is going to feel more linear uh, if you own the fox body back in the day it'll feel like an old school uh, fox body when it comes to clutch engagement so first mod that needs to be done on every mt82 car is helper spring out of there so a couple of things i noticed right away and i forgot about this um i have like a tall torso and this car compared to the Genesis, which is not really a comparison, is a lot shorter in height like than the Genesis. So I'm literally all the way down on the seat, right? And I'm like pretty close to hitting the top. But when you put a helmet on it, it's when it becomes an issue. But everything else is pretty much straightforward, just like the, uh, the red car. For some reason, the red car's leather seats seem to sit lower than this, or maybe there's more adjustment. But the first thing after taking out that stupid helper spring it is a lot better I can actually tell when the clutch is gonna come up as opposed to guessing 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 well there it is so it's just uh, something that I like to do to any manual Mustang with the MT82 it needs that helper spring removed because it makes basically the clutch pedal more predictable for lack of a better word a lot of people don't even notice that because they don't know probably what older Mustangs used to drive like and I prefer that feeling over that springy feeling that the helper spring causes so um, now what I'm gonna show you guys is some of the things that these cars do stock that some people complain about so now since this is pretty much the first time I've ever bought a new car um, a lot of people tend to reference tuning right they say well it didn't do this when it was stuck I had a guy tell me one time Alex when I let off the clutch it revs up it didn't do that when it was stock actually these things have a thing called clutch assist override meaning when you let off the clutch it slightly raises the rpms to help you launch because a lot of you guys don't know how to drive and ford took that into account and i'm going to show you how it works okay, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it in gear and i'm going to slowly take the clutch out and you can see the rpms i'm going to try to get my foot and the rpms in the same shot See, I did not rev it up. It went up to 1,000 RPMs or so. Let me see. Let me cross my foot. Let me see this one. Cross my foot way out of the way and show you. Let go of the clutch. And it revs up on its own so you can literally 
launch the car with the clutch only. A lot of people say, well, it didn't do that before stock. Yes, it did. You just didn't notice it again. Clutch assist override, that's what it's called. And a lot of people get a little confused because they only notice it. That's the funny thing. People tend to notice things in, you know, after they do something to the vehicle, like, you know, change the calibration or tune it, and they start complaining a little bit about certain things. But these cars have a couple of things to take note because a lot of people don't really pay attention to them until after the tune is put in the vehicle. That's kind of the nice thing about owning a bone stock vehicle. You can refute everything everyone says based on you know you owning one and as a calibrator i think it's a good idea to get your hands on one so that when people say well it didn't do this stock you say sure it does and then you can video it and shut them up look at this guy coming in hot anyway this also this this car also has uh, rev matching what it means is when you're revving you know when you're taking off and you go gear to gear it slightly holds the rpms up a little bit to catch the gear again for you non-driving fucks that's what it's meant to do so you'll see it, let me go clutch in. See how it holds at 2,000? Then it drops down. Now I'm gonna go in a second. Accelerate, clutch in, third. See how it holds the RPM at about 2,800? Then comes back down. That is a stock function. A lot of people say, well, no, it didn't do that stock. Yes, it did. You just didn't notice it until you got a tune. Now, someone like me, I want the RPMs to drop as fast as possible, shift to shift, because I tend to shift quicker than most, not because of talent, it's because of driving style. A lot of people, you know, get used, then the other thing happens. A lot of people get used to the rev matching, and a lot of people don't want it, so we disable it in some of the tunes or make it less prevalent. And then people complain that they want it back. So, we cater to the vast majority. If the vast majority doesn't want it, we're gonna cater to them. And if uh, the very few, you know, 10% want it back, well, you know, we'll cater to those guys. But the base tune is gonna be close to stock. It's gonna retain uh, the launch feature, and it's also going to retain some of the some of the upshifting rev matching, but not as severe as as stock also removing that assist spring my goodness it made everything totally different the act i can actually tell boom right there clutch engages right there with the spring right around there it would want to fly up and the pedal would want to fly all the way back so i'm really happy i took that clutch assist spring off because it is a tremendous pain in the butt and so that's one of the first things you should do real quick on the gauge screen this car has a bunch of track apps and of course, Ford decided to change the button configuration to put it on the right. It has the lap timer, it has, the line lock is grayed out, but I think I can bring that back with the calibration. Uh, brake performance, launch control, which I will try. I think it's pretty cool that this car has launch control, but I bet you it sucks because nothing's as good as slightly hazing the tires, in my opinion. And it has an accelerometer, just like any, every other S550 does with a um, performance package. Also, real quick, for a lot of people that get our tunes, like a Lund tune, and they wonder what does EOP mean in our uh, tune form? Engine oil pressure, the gauge. If you have an EOP1, meaning you do not have performance package. If you have EOP2, you have the gauges. Sometimes people get a tune, start the car, and it says no oil pressure, and they freak out. It's simply a transducer configuration in the tune that we just flip a switch and it's an inferred gauge basically so that's pretty much that so don't freak out if you do get a tune that has low oil, low oil pressure pop up in the screen because it's a simple you know tune change that isn't really that big of an issue I'm trying to now it's different taking video and driving a manual because i have to shift with my left hand i'm not going to get on this car yet i want to put some miles on it before I actually go wide open throttle. Why? Because I want to wear in the clutch properly and that's very important. I believe a lot of the issues that people have with these cars is clutch related. A lot of people leave the lot, gosh, holding up my arm is pain in the butt, but a lot of people leave the lot and they go wide open throttle right away and that doesn't give the car a chance to transfer any material from the clutch disc to the to the uh, pressure plate, I'm sorry, the flywheel, pressure plate, flywheel, whatever. You need to transfer some of that friction material back and forth so that you have some bite. What happens is when you don't and you glaze it over, that's when you have chattering, that's when you have issues, that's when you have premature wear. And a lot of people out there really don't give a shit. They just grab it from the dealer, go wide open throttle with the gasoline that's in the from the dealer, 
with the uh, stock calibration, which isn't a bad thing, but you have to make sure you're wearing that clutch properly. Now, what are my plans for this car, this 2018 Mustang? My plans are this, wearing the clutch properly, so give it about 500 miles of stop and go traffic, give it uh, good fuel all the time, and put a tune in it. I'm gonna dyno it, I'm gonna dyno it stock, bone stock, I'm gonna put it in fourth gear because fourth gear is one-to-one -one on these vehicles, and see what it makes, put a tune in it on the same fuel, see what it makes. I don't think it's gonna make all that much. I think it's more dependent on modifications because I think I think uh, Ford did a real good job with these cars and you don't necessarily need to do a whole, you know, you don't need to do a whole bunch in, with pump gas uh, to make a ton more power. You can probably make 15 more, but I'm not expecting 30. It's, not, it's just not gonna happen. And then put a flex fuel tune and an E85 tune in it, delete the cats, AKA free flowing exhaust, and see how it goes from there. And then my, my hope is to get close to 500 rear wheel horsepower if I can. If I can't, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna do my best to make it happy NA. And then we'll see about boost down the line. I got a couple of people interested in uh, putting some boost in this car, but it's not gonna be a crazy quarter mile car. I already have two of those. I have the Fairmont and the red car. This will be a daily driver, road course, autocross car. That's my uh, vision for this car. So there it is, my 2018 Mustang that I'm gonna make a daily driver slash corner carving car. I already have a drag car, so I'm not looking to make another drag car out of it. But with the power potential these cars make with a, you know some small bolt-ons, I can't wait to get started. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you later.